In this experiment, we're going to determine the mass of one liter of a gas, and we're going to plot the mass versus the molar mass of the gas in order to see if we can find the molar volume of a gas. I know that sounds confusing, but give us a minute, it'll make sense. So the first video explains how the apparatus works, and I'll go, and that's going to ask you some of the vocabulary here. Um, we're going to go to the second one here, which video which reminds you how to do some graphing. So take a look at that if you have any difficulty with the graphing. And so what we're going to do is we're going to collect our data and make some graphs. So these are the gases that we're going to collect data on. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look and figure out the molar mass. So I'm just going to start with nitrogen. Nitrogen, each nitrogen um, mole of nitrogen as an element has a mass of 14 grams. So the molar mass of N2 is 28 grams for one mole. And so what we're going to do is figure out what one mole of nitrogen, um, excuse me, what one liter of nitrogen would weigh. From that, we're going to try to find the volume of one mole of any ideal gas. So I've got nitrogen here, and I'm just going to play this video. So we're going to take and evacuate this uh, glass container here, which simply means we're going to take and remove all the air. And when we're done, we're going to take and open that thing up, and the air is gone, and we're going to set the mass of that glass container equal to zero, and we're going to put some nitrogen in. Now, they've got nitrogen going in, and they've opened the other end of this, and this is for the good reason, and the reason is so that pressure inside this glass container will be one atmosphere. And what they've done there is they've taken the rest of this um, piece of uh, the balloon and this connection off so that all we have on this container or on this balance is this glass um, flask that holds our gas. We set the mass of it equal to zero. So the mass here of this volume is one liter. So the mass of one liter of nitrogen gas under these conditions, which among other things is one ATM, has a mass of 1.17 grams. So what are we going to do with this? We're going to come down here and we're going to graph this. So I'm going to go down here and realize the molar mass of nitrogen is 28. The mass for one liter is 1.17, and it's units of grams per liter because it's for one liter. All right, what are you going to do next? Well, you're going to next, you're going to go change gases. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to pick carbon dioxide for absolutely no good reason, and I'm going to do it as well. So you're going to do the same thing. They're going to take and they're going to evacuate it, which takes, means take the air out. And once the air is out, they're going to close that off. They're going to set the mass of this glass container equal to zero. They're going to hook up carbon dioxide. It's going to push the carbon dioxide in. They're going to open the left side so that pressure balances to one ATM, and then they're going to weigh it. And when they weigh it here, the mass of carbon dioxide comes out to 1.80 grams. So we're going to put this in. I'm going to go to CO2. And I'm going to put in that's got 44 grams per mole, and it has a mass for one liter of the gas of 1.80 grams. All right, so what are we going to do with this? Well, we're going to graph this. So when we graph this, we're going to come down here, and we're going to look at our graphs. And for just this moment, I'm going to take these two columns out. So I'm going to remove these two rows. They'll be back in when you see them. Um, and once I've done that, I can graph this guy. So I'm going to take and put these two data points in. So when I put these two data points in, I get two points, and you go, great, so what? Well, I have on my x-axis molar mass. On the y-axis, I have the mass of one liter. Now, you can change these. If you want to change what is on your axis, you just go click on this. You go to your data column, which are labeled, and you take and you put, okay, mass for one liter on this one. And you can take and you can put over here the molar mass of the gas on the other one. You can put these guys on any which side you want. So I'm going to go back to the way it was because we're going to discuss it in that form. And you're going to create two graphs such that um, you're going to change what is on your x and y axes. Now, I want a best fit line. Now, of course, I've only got two points, which means that any best fit line is going to be um, a straight line, but nonetheless, we're going to put it in. So I'm going to go to curve fits. A curve fit is going to generate a line that fits that data. I'm going to come over here and select linear, and I'm going to click done. 
Now, as soon as I have done that, I'm going to come down here and it's going to give me the equation for this linear fit. So y equals, and instead of having mx plus b, they call it ax plus b. Because in the um, data table here, the units were included. You're going to get the units here on your values of a and b. And we're just going to ignore this um, error because it's irrelevant from this one. And so what you're going to do in this is you're going to graph or collect your data where you have the, your gases typed in. You're going to calculate the molar masses. You're going to measure the mass for one liter. And once you've done that, you're going to set a graph. Your first graph is going to have molar mass on the x and the mass for one liter on the y. You're going to do this again such that you're going to put on the second graph your molar mass on the y-axis and your grams per liter on the x. So you're going to just vary what is on your two axes. And with a note here, that's explained that you need to do that. You're going to put a linear fit on both of them. Once you've done that, what we have are two nice graphs. So let's keep track of our graph right here or our um, equation here where again y equals ax plus b or y equals mx plus b and so that we figure out what all of this means. So if we go down and we take a look at this we're going to interpret this. So the first step question we do is we say hey this is a line from a different experiment but what we want you to do is to take a look at yours and make sure it looks like that. So make sure that your fit and your equation are of this form of y equals ax plus b. That's step one. Make sure it's got units because we're going to need those. That's step two. So once you've done that, we're going to take a look at this and say, hey, what's an intercept? So thinking about either graph one or two, without looking at actual numbers, we want you to tell us what did the intercept mean. So go back to your math class and think about what your intercept means. And then we're saying, hey, what would the numerical value of the intercept be for this intercept be for this experiment? So as the molar mass goes down, what's going to happen to the mass of one liter? And think about what that is. Think about what the intercept corresponds to. After you've done that, I want you to compare the two. Is your value for your intercept consistent with what you predicted? Now, what we want to do is take a look at your slope. Now, if we go back to our equation here, where our slope is our a value, so from the first of the two graphs, and this being our equation, our a here is the slope. So with our a here in mind, I need you to take and go down to this one and tell us what that value of the slope is for both your first and your second graph. Note they're not going to be the same because we have our x and y axes switched on those two graphs. Don't forget to include your units. Once you've done that, we want you to simplify them. If you take a look at your um, a value, and you take a look at these units, you should be able to cancel some units out, so please do that, and give us the simplified set of units for both of the slopes, for both graphs. So include those, and think about that one, and I specifically want the units for the second graph, because if we have the second graph, what we want on this one is you to answer a couple of questions. So one, do the mole of gas, do the moles of gas in one liter depend on the molar mass? So think about that. As the molar mass goes up, does the amount of moles that, of gas that would be contained in one liter increase? You should be able to look at your line and answer that question. So from your experiment, part two here is what is the volume of one mole of gas? So take a look at your slope values and see if you can figure out what is the volume of one mole of gas. And the last thing you need to do is to think about molar volume, because we know that the molar volume of any gas at STP, any ideal gas, should be 22.4 liters. Take a look at your numbers. Did you get this one? If you didn't, why didn't you get it? With a note, this was data was collected on a nice hot day.